Hi everyone, I'm Jeff Hall uh, with the Western Historical Society and over the last several years I've done several editions of something we call Western Tales. Uh, I sat with June Kennedy in her home and talked about how she grew the Western and uh, her experiences with the Historical Society and the contributions she had made over the oh, years. Oh yes, year. yes. And then I'm with Shirley McDougall today, okay? Shirley grew up here in the center, and she was a classmate of somebody I just interviewed, Mickey Crocker. Yes. Yeah. So, um, but we're getting a different perspective. When we talked to Mickey, I mean, when we talked to um, June Kennedy, she talked about what it was like in Parkerville. And Mickey told us Forge Village. But you've spent your entire life here on Boston Road. That's, that's correct. correct. Well, that's an accomplishment. Not all well, I don't know. I always thought of myself as a world traveler, and it kind of irked me that I stayed in Boston <laughs> Road all this time. <laughs> oh, well. But I bet you've seen uh, license plates from all over the world come down past Boston oh, Road. Oh, yes. Uh, on the traffic. A little different today on Boston Road? Oh, yes. A lot more speed. traffic. Yeah. Well, we're taping this on April 27th. Um, but before I begin taping, I wanted to wish uh, Shirley a happy birthday. Just celebrated um, your birthday on Monday, okay? Right. And I won't tell anybody the age because I just don't do that. I don't care. Okay, she's 94 years old, folks, as she sits here today. <laughs> um, some of your background. Uh, who are your parents, Shirley? And where were they from? Um, my father. Uh, grew up in West Chelmsford. Okay. His father was a stonecutter with uh, the Fletcher Quarry. Uh, as a young man, came here from England, as a, a very young man. Well, anyway, my father grew up in West Chelmsford, and he got a job with uh, the Abbott Wizard Company when it first began, and so moved to Westford when he got married. <clears throat> and uh, my mother came from uh, Nova Scotia. She was a young girl who wanted to be a nurse, and her uncle, who lived in West Chelmsford, needed some help with his ailing wife. So my mother came to help Uncle George Jackson. Okay. And uh, I so met my father at the church or something, I don't know. I see. Um, when did they move to Boston Road? Do you know? 1929. They moved to Boston Road in 1929. Right. Uh, and you were born in 1928, correct? Right. Okay. So. I was one. You were one year <laughs> That's <old>. easy math. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know we talked earlier, Shirley, uh, about your childhood. Um, let's start at the Frost School, okay? All right. The early years at the Frost School. Now, you go through the Frost School, it's grades one through eight. Right. At the time. Um, and we walked to school every day. And you walked to school? We always walked. We never took a bus. Did they ever call off school? Oh, yes. Yeah. And you knew when school was called off because the fire horn rang. It was a siren at that time. Yes. And, and that went off at 7.30 in the morning if school was called off. So we would wake up and lie in bed and wait for the <laughs> siren to blow. Hope it would. <laughs> well, how did they clear the roads back then? And were there plows? Oh, yeah. On okay. trucks. Yeah, on trucks. Okay. It's for our school. You walked. I remember you telling me you used to walk. You were joined by a friend of yours? Joined by what? A friend of yours? Oh, yeah. Uh, Margaret Sullivan, uh, after a while, moved there, and um, and we picked up Martin C.V. on the way, and a whole bunch of us walked to school, probably Harold Fletcher. Okay. And uh, we walked to school, and we all walked home for lunch, and walked back again after lunch, and walked home after school. You walked from the Frost School back home, and then... You must have been fast. <laughs> well, uh, but the thing is, the only kids who could take a, pe a, back, a bag lunch were the ones who rode on the buses. 
Okay. Because the teachers had to stay there in the classroom and supervise the lunch. Okay. There wasn't any cafeteria. You said you had a recess and a lunch period? Did yeah. Did you go out to the, the playground? Or yes, yes. What did you do in the playground? Run around. Run around. <laughs> Boy, things didn't change. I was in the 1950s at the sergeant. That's what we did. Jump rope and uh, yeah. things like that. Hopscotch? Probably. And we used to play marbles a lot. Okay. Marbles. And get marbles, and there were games for marbles. I don't remember the marble games now, but we did do marbles. Yeah. The field in back of the Frost School, uh, there's a baseball field there, correct? Yes. Yeah. Was the baseball field being used at all? Uh, yeah, I guess it was. Okay. I wasn't paying any attention to yeah. that. Then from there, um, let's see. You said you took piano lessons, correct? Yes. Okay. From about second grade on. Mm -hmm. Was it a couple of times a week? Uh, once, a, once a week. Who gave you the piano lessons? Uh, different people, but to start with, it was, I think it was the daughter of the minister of the uh, Methodist Church in Graniteville, okay. I think. Okay. So she would just travel from Graniteville. But didn't you tell me there was one that came in from Lowell at one time? Well, um, they later they came from different places. Okay. Uh, there was a Mr. Kilm and uh, then there was George Wilson at in Lowell. I used to go in on the bus okay. and take my lesson in there at his studio. Where would you catch the bus? In front of my house. Oh, okay. The bus came, it was uh, it was wonderful. We had the buses came from Ayer to uh, Lowell okay. and turned around and went from Lowell back to Ayer. And sometimes they went through Littleton and sometimes they went through Westford Center and through Forge Village. I see. I see. So that was your man. Did you ever try to take the train in? No. no. All right. I, I, I know I spoke to you earlier about, uh, you know, and we, uh, get to, we get to the uh, your high school years, but um, the shopping in Lowell. I mean, if you were going in, say, at Christmas time to do Christmas shopping, is that where you went? I don't remember doing Christmas shopping. I suppose we did, but I don't remember yeah. it. I know that there were plays in Lowell and things such as that. Well, any, uh, any particular teachers that stuck out in your mind from the Frost School? Well, my first teacher uh, in, in, in Frost School, first in grade one, was Miss Blodgett. And the interesting thing is she then married and became Mrs. Morris. Okay. And my own kids had her. <laughs> 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 she was there a long time. <laughs> Yeah, we said that. And didn't. Ruth Tuttle, of course. And Ruth Tuttle lived on Boston Road. Yeah, yeah. Ruth Tuttle. The Tuttle family was uh, quite yes. a, a very well um, long time family. Yes. Uh, there was a Tuttle girl who I graduated with in 1966. I don't know that that was the same Tuttle, was it? I think a distant, maybe. It may have been. Well, right. it's like the Fletchers. I mean, they're all related to it, might be fourth or fifth cousins. So. The Tuttle we had, Miss Tuttle never married. Yeah. She uh, had a brother who lived with her, and he was a mail carrier, I think, or something. You know where on Boston Road they? Yeah, it's uh, on the other side of the road from where I lived, and up one, maybe. Okay. This side of the Tadmet Club. This side of the Tadmet Club. Okay. Um, high school. Okay. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Before we get to talk about the high school, uh, you told me you went roller skating, but you only told me you did it once. Sledding and roller skating down Forge Village Road and Boston Road? Once. Once. <laughs> but still, that's... I, I, I could that see. was probably ill-advised, but we oh. did it. <clears throat> I don't know that my mother knew it at the time. <laughs> um, your brother had a paper route, didn't he? Yes. Okay. Uh, didn't you have a wild adventure? On your paper route back in 1938? Well, with the hurricane, we were out yeah. delivering papers all during the hurricane. Yes. Okay, starting from your home with the newspapers, tell us where the route went. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> down Boston Road, Okay. then toward uh, Chelmsford on 110, as okay. far as uh, the Nixon family. 
Okay. And then back up to uh, the Four Corners and then down Carlisle Road, all the way down Carlisle Road and off to uh, Concord Road, up to uh, 110 okay. and across 110 to the old Oaken Bucket. Stop there with the Oaken Bucket, okay? The Oaken Bucket is there. Didn't you tell me about somebody had to go to deliver a paper to the Desmonds and you all were standing waiting for the... Is it Don Robinson or Jack? Yes, Don Robinson was with me, okay. and my brother Jack went down to Helen Desmond's with the paper. Okay, delivered the paper to Helen Desmond, and then you left the open bucket. What happened after at the bucket after you left? Well, well, we were standing there in, under a tree to stay dry, and it was starting to rain through, so we moved. And as soon as we moved, a great big branch fell down right where we had been standing. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And now you're headed back down Concord Road towards Forge Village, right? We went down Concord Road to um, uh, Hilder Street. Okay. Then up Hilder Street to uh, Flag Road. Mm -hmm. Then down Flag Road to Forge Village Road. And then down to Mrs. Scott's. Okay. And then back up and all the way back up to the center of town. And when we got to the center of town, what was going on there? The hurricane had been raging, and uh, some trees were down, and the uh, wires were down, and the electric people were out there with their big truck, mm -hmm. and they said to us, what are you kids doing out in a storm like this? And we innocently said, we're delivering the papers. Of course, <laughs> what else? Un Unbelievable. <laughs> and it was pouring rain, pouring rain. I mean, did you have it? Did, surely from, I, apparently there was no indication. I mean, like, no one came on and said, hey, there's a hurricane coming in. You just thought it was going to be raining. It, it, was, it wasn't forecast. No, oh, okay. But the sky was yellow before we went, and it was kind of a strange feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we didn't know what it was. We didn't know much of anything. <laughs> well, we just delivered the papers. <laughs> did what say, we were told. The weatherman didn't either. <laughs> nah. Oh yeah, they, and uh, I mean, you consider how big that paper route was. Yes. I mean, uh, uh, the the amount of miles. The, the, I think it was ten miles. Yeah. My my father complained about it afterwards. Yeah. And they sent somebody out to measure it and found it was much too long, and they divided it up <laughs> afterwards. Wow. <laughs> uh, let me get, um, in the center of town at the time, uh, did you, uh, what, a church that you attended? We went to the Congregational Church. The Congregational Church. Uh, didn't you have it? Did you play the um, organ there? I didn't play it at the church. I, I took less organ lessons at the church. Okay. My father made arrangements with them to let me do that. Was there an incident with you and the organ in the, uh, the fire station next door? It was at what? An, an incident with you? Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> I got scared out of my wits. I was practicing one day, and I was playing the lost chord. And when you get to a place where uh, all the stops are out and you're playing this chord, and this terrible noise happened, and I thought I had broken the organ. And it was five o'clock and the horn went off at five o'clock here, right behind, and the church organ was right within feet. <laughs> Scared me to death. <laughs> oh. um, did you, uh, I guess, when you went shopping or your parents went shopping, which stores did you go to? You mean in town, in town grocery yeah. shopping? Yeah. Austin Fletcher's red and white store. Austin Fletcher's. Now, Austin yeah. Fletcher's with Conley Insurance is today. Yes, correct? Conley Insurance. Austin yep. Fletcher's. Yeah. Okay, the red and white store. And you didn't honor the other one that was um, the right store? Right and Fletcher. Right and Fletcher. Uh, the other one uh, was um, uh, Bassie Watson. Okay. It was a different owners over We didn't go up there so much. Well, and Austin used to call my mother on the phone and get the list of what she wanted, and he delivered it. It was pretty nice. Uh, not a and my father wrote a check, yeah. and it was 
quite nice. <laughs> I, I've, I've read uh, uh, residents of Graniteville did the same thing with uh, with the stores down there. That right. They just call in, they'd have every, everything around, and actually would deliver it to your house. So, right, right. Um, but you, you didn't spend all your time. Didn't you spend some time in Forge Village during the summer? Yes. Okay, whereabouts? Um, my father worked at the main office of the Abbott Wizard Company, and the Abbott Wizard Company owned three camps at the right next to Rogers yep. on what's that Pleasant Street? Yeah, Pleasant Street. And there's a little uh, beach there with a little mm -hmm. uh, with a couple of rowboats, and we got to use one week at either the lower camp or the upper camp. Okay. And we did every summer. Loved it. Um, there was. Do you ever go into the Ford Center at all? Did we go where? To set up. I mean, if you're on the pond, did you ever go into Ford Center? Oh yes, my brother used to row the boat down there. But there was an attraction. You, I think you told me about the Down Easter. Oh, that the train went through. This was the first. I don't know. Big special train, not a steam engine anymore. Okay. But uh. But it traveled through at a certain time of the day, and I, you were telling me, Shirley, that you made a point of going over there, I guess, in the boat. No, we just yeah. went this one time. Oh, it was okay. the first day they were going through or something. My father was a bit of a train buff, and he knew about it, and so we rode down there to watch it go through. Okay, and it just went flying through. It didn't stop or anything. Okay, yeah. Uh, I did, although they did have a commuter rail that did run through Fort Trill. It was going but south this, somewhere. This was, uh, I think it went to Washington, from Washington, D.C. up to Maine or something. Yeah, it was coming from that. Maine yeah. somewhere. Okay. Yeah. So we get to high school. And I just happened to have with me a 1946 yearbook. Very good. Um, and just kind of point out how things might have been a little bit different. Uh, the principal that particular year was a gentleman by the name of Albert C. Cook, who was also a teacher, correct? Yes, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. And then there were eight other teachers. Yeah. So nine faculty members in all, at, which was with the Rodenbush at the time. Yes. Okay. And uh, there were 37 members of your class Yes. at the time. And I have the names of just some of those. Um, I wanted to point out just because it's quite a class, class of 1946, along with the talented Shirley Byrne at the time, <laughs> okay, who wrote, by the way, the farewell hymn that was... Uh, I guess I did, yeah. ...as part of that, yeah. Uh, uh, were Bob Fitzpatrick, a member of the planning board here in town, Harold Fletcher. Harold had been the uh, the water superintendent for years and active with the fire department. Yes. In town. Yes. Uh, geez, my uh, my cousin Phil Hall, who also worked for C.G. Sargent, so was in the same location as your dad. Right. Bill Cavanaugh. Yeah. Bill was town moderator for years and served on finance committee. Yes. Uh, Mickey Crocker. Mickey Crocker, who was the town aide, uh, very active with the housing. She town. was Mickey McNiff at that time. Mickey McNiff at the time, correct. And then, of course, there was uh, Margaret Sullivan, who became Margaret Tebbets. Yes. Mother of Ken Tebbets, who was responsible for much of what right. we see here today at the. Uh, Her father was the chief of police. That's correct, yeah. The whole police department, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Just well, about. The, yeah, the police department. There was him and I think uh, Joe, uh, John Connell right. was his deputy chief. Yes, or yes. But that was it. That was the police department. Yeah. 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 Well, okay. So this is a couple of members of the class. Uh, talk a little bit about your experience in high school. Um, there were... I look at the, the, the listing of different events throughout the year. Football games and basketball games. Do you remember if they played the football games in back of the Rodenbush at the time? Not football at that point. Yeah. Uh, we didn't have a football team until uh, a young man named Bob Cross moved to Westford from Melrose. Mm -hmm. And he kind of got a football team started. But we had a lot of basketball teams. 
and we played basketball uh, in the gym. And during the intermission, my brother Jack used to set up music in the, uh, there was a little. On the stage? No, he didn't do that. It was records he played. Oh, okay. the, the little uh, room there that he used. Okay. And we all danced. Where were the spectators? There were no bleachers. So if you went to the basket, did you just stand along the side? I guess. Side of the court? Yeah, I don't think we had a place to sit. And there was, I know there was a stage there. Yeah. Okay, there was a stage there when I was there. Yeah. In 1960, in the sixth and seventh grade. Right. Um, but the, so the basketball players, and I guess they had, you know, that was, that was probably the big sport. I know the football games just started, and they had a baseball team as well. How about the, uh, does the school play that year? We did. We had plays. It was called? Mrs. Rochefort was the director oh, okay. of the plays, the usually. It was called Dollars to Donuts? That was yes, the that was one. Yeah, and you were featured in that one, I know. I was always in the plays. <laughs> there was a picture of you right there, Cheryl. I like to do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, it, 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 as a matter of fact, in the class wills, you left your dramatic talent to another student, as I was reading. I don't there. remember that. I haven't well, seen uh, that for years. Yeah. But when you were out there, starting in 1943, you said you worked at Kimball's. In the summer. Yeah. You were one of the Kimball girls, they were called? Oh, yeah. Right. But you know, the thing about high school is, this was during the war. Mm -hmm. And everything happened that was tainted by the war. Mm -hmm. In fact, my senior year, my physics class, I had six different teachers that year. Wow. Because the men moved along and went into the service or something. And of course, the boys in school went into the service as soon as they graduated. So it was kind of a solemn period, would you say? Well. Not solemn so much as very much uh, uh, organized by it. Yeah, okay. Uh, it wasn't your regular high school. It was war, and everything was rationed, and yeah, okay. And uh, things were very tight. You couldn't go anywhere or do anything. No class trips, no anything yeah. like that. Um, I know that they, there was a plaque. In fact, we have it here at the museum. Uh, that uh, honored all of those um, members starting, I think, in the class of 1933 uh, and up until who served uh, in, in the military. You right. probably remember that plaque from uh, when it was displayed at the school, but we have it here at the museum. Uh -huh. um, you also uh, took part in the looking, was it scouting for airplanes? Looking, oh, yes. Everybody did. Everybody had a time they did it. Um, you go upstairs, up in the town hall mm -hmm. and watch for airplanes uh, out the windows as far as you could see. And if you saw a plane, you called it in okay. to some number we had. And they had to know whether they were expecting that plane there or not. And the couple that we see at town hall that's there today. Yeah. Because the other one got blown down, I think, in 1938 in the, uh, the hurricane. You might have seen it, but you were up doing papers. Right. My sister and I used to do a stint up there watching for planes. I don't think we saw any, but we were there looking in case we did. Was it during the day that you had your stint? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And what'd you do while you were up there? Just kind of hang out or did you play cards or...? Look, watched for airplanes. Watched. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good to know you were alert. Uh, well, we were. We were doing stint? our duty. <laughs> how long were you stint, Shirley? I don't know. An half hour, half you know? hour, maybe. Oh. Not, not a long, long time. Yeah. Interesting. My Interesting. mother used to go up there and do a midnight time. I don't know why she did that, but she did. But it was being 24 hours a day. Yep. Yeah. Did you ever see any planes? No. Nope. And all the time, okay? I don't think so. I don't remember that we did call it in. We knew what we were supposed to do if we did, but we didn't, I never plugged it in <laughs> that I recall, anyway. Yeah, uh, uh, is, 
when I'm talking to Mickey Crocker, she kind of expressed the same thing, that it was wartime. And right. even though you know, those experiences you have in high school that you say you treasure, and you can look at th th these things here, like, like the basketball and the football games, it just was different because right. there were some leaving, they were graduating or leaving before they graduated. Right. And some weren't coming back, surely. Yeah. 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 And that must have been, uh, had a long time effect on that. Uh, I know that my family, uh, my Uncle Donald was captured by uh, oh. Michigan Action, 1944, wow. and escaped. Um, wow. Escaped and, you know, made it back and all of that. But the, but the impact it had on the family. Oh, yes. At that time. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, and, and the girls used to write letters to the guys when they went. They would leave school and they'd say, will you write to me? Because this is before cell phones and before email and any of that kind of thing. And so the only thing they had was mail. And we all wrote letters to the guys that were in the mail. Did you so. write to a Mel Downing? Yeah. Okay. So Mel Downing, that this came up at one time before Shirley, but does Mel Downing actually, did his family come to Westford during the summer? They had a place over on Groton Road okay. where they grew vegetables. Okay. And I think his father used to take the vegetables into Lowell and give them to people. I never knew much about that. Yeah. But. So how did you end up, did, 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 you, did you know him personally? Yeah. And write letters to him? Okay. Yeah. He was, his, his family and the Sullivan family were very close. Oh. And uh, I met Mel at Sullivan's, kicking around the backyard. Okay. And uh, I, I wrote to Mel and Mel wrote to me. And many years later, many years later, not too long ago actually, I thought I better, I never threw these letters away all these people I wrote to, and I thought, this is kind of silly to save all these, all these years later. So I decided to send the letters back to them, thinking they might enjoy seeing them after all these years. So I sorted the letters, and I found that every one of them had died. Okay. Uh, except maybe this Mel Downing, but I didn't know where he was. I never heard from him since 1947. And I didn't know where he was. And um, I reached out to the Sullivan family to see if anybody there knew where he was. Mm -hmm. And uh, Margaret's daughter, Sandra, yep. got very interested in the whole thing. And she looked up on her computer and found A. Mel Downing in Florida, 91 years old. Okay. And uh, would I like the address? So I wrote him a letter and said, if this is who you are, call me. And, uh, and he did. Oh, okay. <laughs> and he still does. And I hear from Mel every week or two. Ah, <laughs> uh, that is, that is, uh, yeah. Yeah, he's 90, what is he, 95? He's going to be 96 this summer. Well, it says that the class grinds, which is, which is kind of like what they leave, it says, I'm reading from the uh, 1946 yearbook. To Shirley Byrne, we give the little black book so that the names of your ever-increasing male acquaintances won't skip your mind. <laughs> you tell us a little bit about that, Shirley. <laughs> I haven't seen that for years and years. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> uh, you, as a kibble girl, of course, you saw 110. Anything about 110 back in the 1930s or 40s that kind of stuck out in your mind. I mean, there, you had the Elms down there, uh, Pauly's, there was a uh, Pauly's, which was built in 1941, opened and closed for a long time. But there was also a little pizza place, a, a spaghetti place where, oh, I think the um, Hafner's is today. Um, Michelson's Farm, the Oaken Bucket. Did you frequent that at all? No, we just went from home to Kimball's, and that's it yeah. for 110. How did you get back and forth from Kimball's? I don't know. I think my father or my mother drove me, or maybe my brother Jack when he had his car okay. when he was home. I don't know. I don't remember. And I asked my sister. She said she remembers going to Kimball's on a school bus after school because oh. she worked there, too. And, uh, but I don't. I never did go on a bus, so I, I don't know. Um. 
Ice cream cone, how much did it cost? What is it? Ice cream cone, how much did it a cost? A cone? Cone, one cone. Um, maybe about 12 cents. And a small cone was nine cents? Uh, seven or nine, I forget which. Okay, a Kimball special? Yeah, I don't know, I think that was 75 cents. Okay, I'm just, I'm just thinking today they're about $10. Oh, uh, yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> and you mentioned the bus, the buses, you didn't take the bus. In the advertisements for the 46 yearbook, compliments of the Westford bus drivers. E. Miller, that was Edward Miller, Ed Sullivan, B. Hilders, H. Wright, and Mr. and Mrs. W. R. Shea. Five bus drivers. Five buses through the whole town. For goodness sake. Yeah, for goodness sakes, I guess. Things are a little different um, than we see today. Uh, also, let's see, um, I just, one of the things I, I did want to point out, though, from that class as well, is that you had um, advertisements, and any of these places strike a bell, you know, uh, when they went out and get advertisements. As I said before, Shirley, many of them were from Lowell, uh, Cherry and Webb's, but you did have a few, Drew's, Kimball's, Bill's Barbershop in, in Forge Village, J.A. Haley's Oil Company, Abbott Listed, of course, who your dad worked for, um, Jim Knowlton General Store. That's yeah, that job. was where Bassie Watson used to be. Okay. And okay. Jim Knowlton yeah. then bought that out or something, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. And you could reach them by telephoning 4081, Guadalupe Cooperative, George Reese Clover Farm, do you remember what right trucking out of here, the center of town here? What about right trucking? Right trucking, yeah. 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 Across the street from the town hall. Yeah, I guess they, they carried a lot of the produce that was produced here in town into Boston. So. Yeah, right. Um, 1950, you graduated from the Lowell Normal School. So right. you went to school. Did you commute on the bus every day back it, and forth? Yes. Okay. So you didn't stay in Lowell? At the no, time. no. And the bus sometimes would stop in front and wait for us to come running out. Okay. <laughs> My sister and me. Yeah. And you were probably in, I, I know the old building is just done over at Lowell uh, this past year. They've renovated the place. I spent the year down there too in that, that building. I haven't seen it. I don't know. Yeah. It's, um, I know that they just did it over. Um, and then you went to, uh, to teach in Springfield for a year, right? Yes. Um, what grades were you teaching? What is it? What grades were you teaching? First. First grade. Okay, so you're on, well, of course, they, they, they focused on elementary school out of law. Um, how long did you teach? One year, and then I got married. <laughs> okay, so we talk about your husband, Stephen. Okay. Yes, all right. His family moved to Westford. Okay, in 1939, of course, his, his father, Alistair yes. McDougall, was um, very well known in town as a historian. He was a, on the land at one time or another. He was a county extension agent. County extension agent, very, very busy. And um, Concord. Certainly left his trademark on this place here, the uh, yes. Historical Society. But Stephen went to Proctor Academy in Andover. Right. He, he was an avid skier there, correct? Yes. Uh, which later on got him into the ski tow business here in town. <laughs> right. He was a gunnery instructor during the United, in the United States during, Navy during World War II. Um, and I also said that uh, your family spent your summers up at um, Robbins Island in Essex, Mass. Yes. Okay. Did you have a camp up there? Or? Yes. Okay. So you'd leave and you'd spend your summer months there when the kids got out of school? When the kids got out of school, we stayed there until school started in the fall. Oh, okay. And then we came home. Yeah. <laughs> were you, uh, during those years, you were a house, um, a stay-at-home mom, basically. Yes. Uh, did you get involved in PTA or any of those activities, any of the civic things, anything with the church? church suppers or anything like that? When we were in Westford, I, I sang in the choir yeah, for okay. years and years and years. So, okay. Um, yeah. Um, 
But the ski talk. Apparently, uh, your husband was his, with his skiing. How did this all come about, the ski talk? Well, he, uh, at the time, his father was very uh, involved with the Ashby uh, Middlesex County uh, camp. Okay. They put a toe on that hill up there in Ashby. And then his father said to him one time, you know, you spend every, every Sunday up in Ashby, why don't we put a rope toe on the hill here in Westford? So th we did. Just so people know where this is, it's actually with Blake's Hill then, correct? Yeah, and it's grown up and looks awful now. <laughs> well, that's, but it, agree, you, you would say, with, will you take the entry into King's Pine, if you went across from that, that entryway into King's right. Pine, and up that hill, right. that's where the ski toe was. Yes. In the late 50s and into the mid 60s, would I be correct? Yeah. I can remember yeah. it, Shirley. I never skied. Yeah. But I just remember it. And uh, why did you shut it down? Um, there were a few reasons. One was um, Neshoba opened up, okay. so there was a place for the kids to ski. And then the other thing was, uh, right at that time, there was a lot of suing happening. And then, too, Cynthia, who had been such a big help mm -hmm. teaching the kids how to get on the rope and all that, so she went off to college. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that's part of it. Yeah. All a bunch of a, a lot of little reasons. Cynthia was in a very talented class out of Westwood Academy too. She was what? She was out of came from a very talented group of people. Oh yeah, Six, yeah. That'd be my class. I just figured I'd throw that out. There. Yeah, throw that right out. <laughs> yep, she, she's yeah. great girl. Um, who sold the tickets? Uh, I don't know who sold the tickets. Whoever. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just wondering. Um, Maybe she did. I don't know. Yeah. It, it just, you know, did the traffic have anything to do with it? The increase in the traffic on, on Boston Road? There wasn't much traffic at that time. And we're going back to the 1960s. And yeah. I, well, I lived here where the cottage is for three years in the 70s, and I used to back out to go to school in the morning, back out onto Boston Road. Yeah. Don't do that today. No, but you could it. then. <laughs> um, I'm going to kind of wrap things up, Shirley. I'd like to talk a little bit about your reflections of Boston Road, okay, in the center. Um, you, uh, after, your kids, after your kids were out of school, you went back and used your degree again, correct? I was the homebound tutor. Okay. And worked for the... Uh, Special Education Department of the Westford School System. And you worked in Chumpson as well, didn't you? And I as well. Chumpson? Uh, well, it was kind of a funny thing. Um, I was in and out of the schools mm -hmm. and the kids who couldn't go to school for three weeks. Yeah. And um, at one point, I had been working in and out of Nabnasset a bit, and a Korean boy moved to town and was in Chumsford and they didn't know what to do with him. He couldn't speak English. Well, <laughs> he couldn't understand English. And here he was in school and they said to me, is this anything you could help with? And I had, uh, Steve and I had adopted Cynthia who came to live with us from Japan mm -hmm. when she was eight years old. And she couldn't speak English either. <laughs> so I wasn't afraid of it. And so I went and helped this young man Myung Su, I think his name was, mm -hmm. and uh, and then one of the teachers in 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 Nabnasset's husband was on the school board in Chelmsford, and they had a a Korean family move in, and would I be willing to go help with that? And so that's when I started in Chelmsford, and I was in Chelmsford for twenty years. And once again, I. Pass for us here, Shirley, because I was in Chumpsford for 38 years as a teacher. So some of those, some of those students that you uh, worked with, I'm sure, were some of mine. We can trade stories sometime later on. That that could be, yes, that would be interesting. Yeah, right. Um, okay, going up Boston Road, uh, we see King's Pine today. 
right? You remember what it was like before King's Pine? Oh, yes. And the whole square area of the Mosquito used to be a pasture. Okay. And uh, it's had animals and, uh, and stuff. And when I was a kid, it was Joe Sullivan had cows there. And then my father-in-law, later on, uh, had some Scotch Highland cattle. We had 13 of them. And they were all over in those various places, eating the weeds and grass and stuff and keeping it down. But now it's grown up because it needed to be mowed. And yeah. George Fletcher used to mow it. And George decided not to do it anymore or something. I forget what. How about the Tabman Club? Well, that was very busy when we were growing up because yeah. our house was basically across the street from the Tabma Club, up one. And uh, the ladies used to come and have their program and their tea. And okay. my sister and I very often were, uh, re would ask to help out with some of the music we did. Did you know Mae Balch? Oh, yes. Okay. Did you have... A lot of contact with her? Not a lot, maybe, but her niece, her nephews lived in New York City, and they used to spend the summers okay. uh, with the uh, Courier family. And May Balch is a relative of theirs. And uh, How about the Hildreths? Charlie Hill and Alice Hildreth, they were town clerk on Boston Road. Right. Yeah. There were two houses down from yeah. us. Yeah. Uh, did you have much contact? I know we used to go there for our fishing licenses. Well, if we needed a birth certificate or something like that, we would go to their house, but otherwise we didn't uh, have anything to do with them. It was an interesting place to walk into. Uh, it was just... I don't recall. Uh, I just remember there were papers all over the table back in the 60s. And yeah. She knew where everything was. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, of course, the firehouse uh, and the cottage you see out here, which we're right now in the museum. Okay. Right. Um, and uh, how about Doc Blaney? Did you have any contact with Doc Blaney? We had nothing to do with Doc Blaney, really. I think we had to go there one time to get a, a paper for to go to camp or something. Okay. Uh, but, uh, but other than that, nothing to do with Doc Blaney. No. Okay. Um, so if somebody got sick, what did you do? Uh, Dr. Forsley over on, uh, next to the town hall. Okay, Dr. Forsley, yeah. There was Doc Cowles was in town at the time. Too. It was what? Doc Cowles, Dr. Cowles. She oh, was he was, he was the Abbott Worcester, yeah. uh, uh, the actually Abbott doctor. Here in the, uh, yes. in the book. Um, how about the old schoolhouse that was right at the corner where the tavern where the Lampsons lived across the street here? The number one schoolhouse. The oh, was there. that was torn down. Yeah. I remember Ben Prescott lived there for a little while. Okay. But uh, that was torn down, but I don't know anything about it. The mansion, the Jack Abbott house. Yeah. I think a lot of people know that it was there, but it was a mansion used by the uh, the Nabnassa Playhouse. With yes. The, um, uh, Actors would come out and stay there during yeah. the summertime. When they and were... pretty much uh, wrecked it. Yeah, and that's why they tore it down, I guess. Well, my father-in-law owned it. Alistair McDougall owned it. Okay. And he he's the one that tore it down. All right, yeah. I've seen pictures of it. Because it was in disrepair, yeah. and it needed a lot of work. And uh, I, I wasn't involved. I really don't know. The library, did you use the library at all? The library? Mm -hmm. Yes, in fact, my sister and I worked there two or three afternoons a week after school. We would put the books where they belonged. Who was your boss? Oh, May Day. May Day. <laughs> oh, yes. And that's where my brother and Donald Robinson used to do their uh, homework at night. They would go to the library and do their work there. Don Robinson became very, lived in that desk and played around. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, and uh, I know that he was active with the fire department down yep. there. Very active with the fire department. Yep. Well, he uh, was a good friend of my brother Jack's. Yeah, well, he was with, on the paper with you. Oh, yeah, okay. that time he was, yeah. yeah. Town Hall, um, I know that a lot of the activities, suppers and dances and things like that, were taken out of Town Hall, correct? Yes. Had a beautiful floor for dancing. Yeah. And so your dances were held there rather than at the school. 
um, yeah, some of them, the, you know, the graduation ball and mm -hmm. uh, apple blossom dance and things like that. Your sister, who ended up marrying a Weber from Littleton, we remember Weber florist over there. Right. Uh, speaking of apple blossom, she was the queen in 1940. She was the representative of Westford yeah. in the Queen's Court. The Queen's Court, and the Queen was? Jackie Ewing. At Littleton, correct? At Littleton, yes. Well, that, I hear you get a more clearer picture of the center of town and growing up at a time. Any particular memory, great memory you have, or one you'd like to share with everyone? Well, actually, uh, Westford Center was a very quiet place to grow up. Mm -hmm. There was nothing going on. Okay. And uh, there was no place to go. Nothing to do, no place to hang out. Uh, it was very quiet. The families did whatever they did themselves, and uh, there were mostly families. And um, but it wasn't like it was in Forge Village or Graniteville or Graniteville or, 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 or because of the yeah village. no, yeah. it wasn't like that. It was just all private groups of people and nothing happening. But it was a good place to be. Correct? I guess so. Yeah. It's the only place I know. <laughs> I don't have much to compare it to. Well, you've made it to this far, so you Yeah, I've, been, I've been here for a while. Right, right. Well, Julie, I, I'm going to close it up. I, wanna, I appreciate you coming on and sharing well, your experiences. Well, whatever it's worth. <laughs> and uh, let me wish you a happy birthday, as I said. You're well, thank you. recently passed. And uh, many, many more, I hope. Well, <laughs> we'll see. Okay. We don't have much control over that. No, we don't. Thank you again, Cheryl. Well, thank you. And thank you for tuning in, everyone.